Hi everyone, I'm Neil Weaver, writer at Modo, and this is our introduction to the UK carbon market. Before Brexit, the UK was part of the EU's Emissions Trading Scheme, or ETS. In the lead up to leaving the EU, the UK government began consultation on whether to continue using a similar system, a UK ETS, or to impose a carbon emissions tax. Ultimately, it decided to go with the former. On the 1st of January 2021, the UK ETS was launched. An ETS is a system in which allowances to emit greenhouse gases are auctioned off by the government. The government sets a cap on the amount of specified greenhouse gases that those covered by the scheme may emit annually. This amount is split up into allowances, with one allowance being equivalent to one tonne of greenhouse gas emissions. In the UK ETS, there are 5% fewer allowances in circulation than UK businesses had access to under the EU scheme. These allowances are then auctioned off to businesses who can use them to cover their own emissions or trade them on a secondary market. This is known as a cap and trade system. In theory, the market price rises over time due to the limited allowances in circulation and less demand for carbon drops. In some cases, allowances are awarded for free. These free allowances tend to be given to companies that face the fiercest international competition from businesses in countries that do not levy an equivalent price. As such, companies like Tata Steel and British Steel were awarded millions of free allowances for 2021. At the end of the year, a given business must surrender the requisite allowances to cover its emissions over that period. Any leftover allowances can then be carried over into the next year or traded on a secondary market. There are some potential issues with the ETS system. Arguably, granting free allowances defeats the object of having carbon prices at all, as these emissions escape pricing altogether. On top of this, only around 30 to 40% of emissions generated in the UK come from businesses that participate in the scheme. This is due to the selection of industries that are covered or not covered by the scheme. For example, those in agriculture, among others, do not need to obtain allowances for their emissions. Some argue that a more comprehensive catch-all carbon tax would provide a bigger incentive for businesses and consumers to adopt greener alternatives to fossil fuels. It is clear that the ETS goes some way to disincentivising and reducing UK carbon emissions. That said, the government may need to adopt a sturdier, more ambitious system if it is serious about achieving its net zero targets. To learn more about how we can build the future energy system, head along to Modo's website, modo.energy. Thanks for watching and see you next time.